This tutorial explains how to perform fuzzy matching in the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University. So without too much talk, I'll hand it over to Kirby. Hello everybody, I'm Kirby White, here to do a quick tutorial on fuzzy matching or approximate string matching in R. Let's jump right in. And I'm gonna use two sample data sets um, or just quick objects to create for this example. One I'm gonna call Prez is just the informal name of two recent United States presidents, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. I'm also gonna create a data frame of presidents and their vice presidents, but the name of the presidents in here uh, are more formal. And so if we create these, let's take a look at what we created. We have uh, one vector with Bill Clinton and Barack Obama as the two elements and one data frame with a list of presidents and vice presidents. Now you'll notice that the names in this list, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, are not exact matches to William J. Clinton and Barack H. Obama, even though those we know that those are the same people. And so this is the kind of problem that is a good fit for fuzzy matching in R. The traditional way of finding matching elements across data sets is with one of these two functions. The first one, match, just looks through every element of the pres vector and compares it to every element of the president column in our data frame. And it says that there are two non-matches. Uh, that is to say, it couldn't find a match for either element of our pres vector in this column of data. A really related function is this in function, where we say, is each element of pres, does it exist somewhere in the um, uh, president column of our data frame? And again, it says no, neither element has a match in the data frame. And so this is really the problem um, that is a good fit for fuzzy matching because you and I can tell or know that there are matches across these people, but the R um, programming language can't tell because they're not exact matches. So the, um, the algorithm that's used to determine similarity between um, character strings is called the Levenstein distance. And let's walk through a couple exa uh, examples of how this works before we continue looking at the R code. So let's say we have two uh, words that we want to compare, right and tight. We know that these are really similar, but they're not exactly the same. But how similar are they? The Levenstein distance gives us a tool to calculate that, to quantify their similarity by counting how many substitutions, insertions, or deletions it would take to make the first word be an identical match to the second word. And in this case, they are very similar because it only takes one substitution and zero insertions or deletions. If we look at one more example, nightly to tight, we can see that these are still pretty similar words, but not as similar as the first pair. And it takes one substitution and two deletions to make nightly an exact match to tight. We have to change N to a T, and then we have to delete the L and Y, and then they are identical. So the Levenstein distance for these two words is three when it was only one for these two words. And so we can tell that right and tight are more similar to each other than nightly is to tight. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what the algorithm is gonna be doing under the surface. And this algorithm is in fact already baked into the base functions of R. A dist is the function that calculates a matrix of Levenstein distances between two vectors. So we can pass our first vector pres and the second or the column of our data frame in here, and we um, it calculates the Levenstein distance for each combination. So uh, we have two elements in our first list. So this row is the first element. Uh, which was Bill Clinton, and this row is the distances for the second element, which was Barack Obama. And because smaller distances mean that they are more similar, we can see that the best match for the first element is the fifth element of our second list, and the best match for our second element of the first list is the third element of our second list. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, in there and so this is just a way to quickly calculate the distances for every combination of elements in 
in two uh, vectors. Now you should be warned, this gets computationally intensive as you have larger and larger lists. It's really quick for you know uh, this combination of 10, but in large ones, it, it can be computationally intense. The agrep, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, the agrep function is also in the, the base package of R, and it has a limitation that it can only compare one, a one element to a vector at a time. So whereas a dist can take a vector and compare it to a vector, this one can only take one string and then compares it to a vector. But let's see what happens when we do this. A grip says, let's find the best match for uh, Bill Clinton in the president column. Max distance here is where you specify how good of a match it needs to be before the algorithm says that there is a match at all and it has returned two matches, Joseph R. Biden Jr. and William J. Clinton. These are the only two elements in our data frame that were this similar. Now this 0.7, this is a ratio of uh, similarity. If we need things to be more exact matches, we can shrink it. If we're okay with a little more error or they don't need to be as similar, we can increase it. So 0.7 is actually a little bit on the high end. Now, the problem with this function is that it did not return the match values in order of their similarity. So you and I know that William J. Clinton is the best match for Bill Clinton, but the algorithm has not returned these in order. The first element is Joe Biden Jr. And so this makes it difficult to use this particular function other than one at a time for you to, to manually check what the most... Um, what the most similar match is. It's still useful, but it can be difficult to, to scale this up to large data sets. If we remove this value equals true argument, which I've done here, this is the same function, but without that argument, what it has done is instead of returning the value of the matched elements, it returns the location of them. So it's saying that the, uh, that the first and fifth element of our data frame um, had were a good enough match to the first element of our pres vector. This may seem less useful, but this actually is the primary way that we're going to use this because what we're wanting to do is find row matches across data sets. And so really we care less about what the values are that are matched and more about where the matches are. And so these are the base functions, um, a dist and a grep, that both have problems in them. And so what I want to do is introduce you to the string dist package. This is string distance, and you can go ahead and install it with this line of code. And once it's installed, you can uh, load it by calling the library function. And so I've done that already. Go ahead and pause and, and install it if you need to. And the main function that they have in here that we want to use is called a match. Now this solves both problems that we had earlier. It allows you to compare a vector to a vector and instead of returning everything that met some criteria, it returns the most similar match that meets your criteria. So here we're gonna use max distance of uh, 10 and this is just sort of the threshold for what is a good enough match. But even if there are multiple matches that, that are at least a 10 on the distance, or I'm sorry, less than 10 on the Levenstein distance, it'll return the most similar of them. So let's run a match. And because we're comparing it vector to vector, this five is the best match for the first element of pres. And the three is the, the element of the data frame that's the best match for our second one. And so let's look at um, this. So we had the, a match to the fifth element, which was William J. Clinton, and a match to the third element, which was Barack Obama. If you need a refresher, here's what we were searching for. So the, the best match to Bill Clinton was William J. Clinton. The best match to Barack Obama was Barack H. Obama. So this seems to be working uh, more like what we want. It's returning the best match from a combination. Now, to put this into practice, uh, I'll show you a few examples of how you can use this. So here is the a match function. And what we're doing is putting it into um, the first section of, of subsetting our, our data frame. And so it's going to return 5 and 3, which we're going to use as the 
uh, essentially is the row filter. So when we run this line of code, it says, show me the president data frame, the whole thing, but only show me the rows that are a good enough match to what we had in our first list, that pres character list. And so this is, you can essentially use it this way as a way of filtering a data frame. Another way that you might use it, if you need to merge them at this point, is create a new data frame. And I'm going to create a column called pres that is going to have the values of the pres um, uh, character list, which again is just Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. And then in the second column of the data frame, we're going to then use essentially that same thing that we just did earlier, but instead of returning the entire data frame, just the second column, so the vice president column here. And so when we run that, this is what it looks like. We've got the names from our first list, but the vice presidents from our second list, and those have been matched across, um, across data sets, even though they weren't an exact match. This third one you'd probably use less often, but this is just a way of sort of creating a new vector that combines them before. You're going to take the, the character vector of um, pres with the informal names and then combine that with the vice presidents from our data frame uh, fuzzy matching on the formal names of the presidents and this is what you get uh, when you run something like that so hopefully this has been helpful I find fuzzy matching to be very useful in real world data analytics work um, especially when you have minor misspellings across uh, names of employees or participants in something or there are language differences where uh, somebody may have been entering information on a keyboard that has special characters that don't typically appear in the language that you're working with. Um, those can throw off exact matches across data sets in a way that fuzzy matching allows you to very quickly overcome and find true matches even though they're not exact matches. So I hope this has been helpful. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Thanks again to Kirby Wright for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about fuzzy matching, you may check out the Statistics Globe homepage because Kirby has recently published a tutorial in which he's explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked the video, we would be very happy if you leave us some positive feedback in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to the Statistics Globe YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.